We turn now to former National Security Advisor, retired General H.R. McMaster, who joins us from Palo Alto, California. Um, I want to talk about Russia and China with you, but first, stability in this country. The former president, who you worked for, has issued this call for protests. How concerned are you about security and what it means for the country? Well, of course, Margaret, what I'm hoping for is that Americans come to their senses and recognize you know, that we have strong institutions and should have confidence in the due process of law. And I think that's what you're seeing play out here. Nobody's above the law. And I hope Americans really recognize that what's not, not, not appropriate at this stage is any kind of violence, uh, but, but really to demand the best from our institutions, to ensure that they're insulated from any kind of political interference, but to have, to have confidence you know, that you know, if the president is, you know, as is rumored to be indicted, uh, that he will have the opportunity to defend you know, himself against these charges. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be following that. Um, when it comes to your wheelhouse on the national security front, uh, we just saw these images of Vladimir Putin defiantly traveling to Ukraine. Um, his first known trip to the occupied Donbass region of eastern Ukraine the Kremlin made a point to say he visited children's centers. This is days after an arrest warrant was issued on charges of uh, abducting and deporting Ukrainian children forcibly to Russia. How do you interpret this? Well, I think this is a moment of clarity. I mean, look at just the, the brazen cynicism associated with him going to Sebastopol, which he illegally annexed in 2014, and then to Mariupol, going there at night, you know, visiting sites, the few sites, you know, that hadn't been rubbled, you know, by, by the Russian military as they inflicted uh, murder on, on, on the innocent people uh, in Mariupol. And as you mentioned, you know, he's just been indicted by the International Criminal Court for a kidnapping you know, tens of thousands uh, of, of Ukrainian children. Uh, and of course, this is all on the eve of Xi Jinping, you know, mm -hmm. visiting Putin. So I think what you're seeing is really quite clearly this axis of authoritarians uh, who are a real threat to, to, you know, to freedom uh, and to civilized people around the world. China, we should also know, is accused by the U.S. government of actively conducting genocide against minorities in country. Do you think it gives any pause to Xi Jinping um, when he boards that flight to Moscow that Vladimir Putin was just had this arrest warrant issued? You know, sadly, Margaret, I don't think so. Remember, it's really 10 years ago, almost to the day, that Xi Jinping made his first visit to Moscow and they declared their special friendship. Since then, they've just continued to double down on this relationship. Remember, just before the Beijing Olympics last year, just prior to the reinvasion of Ukraine on February 24th, mm -hmm. they pro professed their partnership with no limits. And he's visiting, you know, he's visiting Moscow at a time when it's become clear from U.S. government reports and from investigative journalists that China is supplying weapons, munitions, all kinds of other support for Putin as he continues this onslaught against the Ukrainian people. This, of course, is economic support. China has increased their purchase yeah. of Russian oil by 60 percent, uh, and they're buying more natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, they're providing all sorts of technological capabilities that are important to sustaining uh, Russia's war-making machine. The U.S. government admits they know uh, surveillance footage or things used for enhancing targeting of the battlefield is being sold by Chinese companies, but they say no lethal support yet has happened. You're saying you don't believe that? I don't believe that. I think what you're going to see in the coming days and weeks is more and more evidence of Chinese support. Uh, you know, the Ch China doesn't want to get caught doing this, right, because at the same time as they're helping the Russians murder Ukrainians, they're also saying, hey, China's open for business. And they're trying to appeal, appeal to American and other investors to continue to prop up their statist mercantilist model even as they commit genocide, even as Xi Jinping, just in the, in, the, in the recent People's Congress last week, he gave really four speeches, essentially preparing the Chinese people for war. I mean, these were jingoistic speeches. He also made it clear that the security economy is, is going to dominate, you know, over the free market economy or the tech sector. And so I, I think it's time for us really to assess the degree to which 
we have been yeah. over many years underwriting in many ways our own demise, you know, with well, investments in China and, and really not doing more yeah. to shore up, you know, uh, shore up fragile uh, supply chains. We've yeah. essentially given an authoritarian regime coercive power over our economy. I want to ask much you, like Europe did with Russia yeah. on, on hydrocarbons. I want to ask you about um, uh, Republican Governor Chris Sununu wrote an op-ed saying some in the Republican Party have lost their moral compass on foreign policy evidenced by former President Trump, who once called Putin's invasion genius and savvy. The governor of Florida has said similar things that appear to be um, diminishing the importance of the conflict. What do you make of the fact that top two contenders for president in the Republican Party are pushing this? Well, I think it's sad, Margaret. I think, you know, why not just just focus on two things? Look at how valorous the Ukrainians have been fighting for their own freedom. That should restore confidence maybe uh, in, in our own nation and, and, yeah. and the gift that we have of being free and having freedom of expression and, and freedom from fear. You know, I, I think yeah. also look at just the atrocities that have been visited on, on the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Uh, and then also recognize that it's in our interest. You know, yes. where does it stop? You know, Putin went to Sebastopol, yes. which he had annexed in 2014. Yeah. And of course, there's a direct line between that and the reinvasion. So I, I I've think gotta, if, we, if, we don't, if we're I've not strong, leave it here. you know. Um, I've got to right. leave it here. Thanks, but I appreciate your analysis. <laughs> we'll be right back.